Good morning, all you lovely ladies in Fempreneur land. This morning, I'm going to be interviewing Selena Novello. I've had the, the pleasure of getting to know her over the last couple of years, and she is a wonderful 19-year-old. I met her when she was still 17, and she has a really, uh, a really, I don't know what the word is, like a story about something that's recently happened to her, and um, it's really going to make you look inside because if you have goals and you're striving and, and working super hard to achieve something and you feel like you've let others down, or you've let yourself down, or you've missed the target in any way, um, this story is going to have a ton of powerful information and um, just self-reflection actions and journaling prompts and things for you. So I'm just going to get Selena on here. Um, so she'll be hopping on here momentarily. So yeah, so Selena is 19, um, had the privilege of getting to know her personally and professionally. Hey, Selena. Hello. How are you this morning? Good. How are you? Good. Ready to just, you know, put your guts out there for the world to see. <laughs> I am. I'm ready. <laughs> ready to share your deepest, darkest secrets. No, I'm kidding. Um, Really, I'm just really proud of you because I know what you're about to share is still raw and I know it's still really an emotional subject for you. So I just want to say how proud I am of you and just how proud you should be of yourself that you're willing to share something that is really, really quite a sensitive subject with others, you know, in hopes that it, it will help them. So um, first of all, do you want to just introduce yourself, uh, tell Fempreneurs a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you kind of came to be part of the Fempreneur community? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Selena Novello. Um, and um, I don't really know what to say about myself. Let's just start with, um, so uh, how I found Fempreneur Land, let's start there. So when I was 16, I started a jewelry business with my mom, and it was through direct sales, social selling, whatever you want to call it. And I still do that today, but um, that's when I started when I was 16. And me and Lindsay met at youth group, which she's mentioned before. And when I first met Lindsay, I was like, oh my God, I love her. I was so obsessed. I was like, I felt the same way about you. <laughs> I was so excited because you were someone who was also inter interested in entrepreneurship because most of my peers were not interested in starting a business or having businesses. So I was so excited when I met you. And then uh, you were telling me about this uh, free marketing school that's not free anymore, but it was free when I first did it. And I was like, um, of course I'll do it. And then I think from there, the, the relationship just kept building and building and we saw each other every week at youth group and yeah, it's, it's been amazing. And so then I have been a part of Fempreneur Land since 2018, so a few years now, and I've loved every minute of it. It's been so amazing. So thank you for creating this great community. Um, a little bit more about me is I am um, a Mount Royal student. I'm trying to start, I am starting my own business. <laughs> and um, I, yeah, I think that's everything about me for right now. Am I missing something? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's lots more about you. I think that is very interesting to all of us uh, who I think are, you know, the average watcher listener of this is quite a bit older than you. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Selena graduated I'm high school. Yeah, I mentioned that before yeah. you hopped on, but like you graduated high school last year in the midst of COVID. Yeah. And that was a really interesting thing for me to watch you go through, of course, just comparing my grade 12 year back in 2000 to your grade 12 year and just watching um, like, yeah, literally 20 years later and with a, a pandemic going on, how you dealt with that. I was just so proud of you so many times because there's a lot of sucky things about your grad. <laughs> right there's so oh many sucky things about your grad and then to top it all off with the story you're going to share today that was another huge challenge so I don't know if you just kind of want to give some more color around all of that and take us back to a year ago absolutely so I'm going to take you further than a year ago I'm going to take you all the way back I'm going to tell you a little bit about my um, education journey so when I was really young 
um, my parents knew right away that I struggled in school. I actually repeated kindergarten um, because I just couldn't memorize the alphabet and I just wanted to color. I was just there for a good time. And <laughs> the only, I could remember three letters and one of course was S because Selena. So <laughs> I, I, was, I was definitely, I started school and I struggled right out of the gate. So I did um, kindergarten for a second year and then kept going. And, you know, it wasn't that it was impossible for me to do school. It just took a lot of effort from myself and my parents. Because my parents, I would come home, not remember anything, have a whole bunch of homework. And what they would do is they would sit down with me and they would teach me. And they're not teachers. So they're teaching from what they learned a couple years ago. So they would sit down with me. They would teach me. They would help me throughout the whole process, which was amazing. But there was just so much struggle. It just wasn't fun. So my parents decided to get me tested in grade three. And they came back and were like, oh, she's just slow. She'll be fine. Everything's fine. But again, <laughs> I'm just slow. That's what it was. So... Oh. My parents were like, okay, but like they didn't really believe that. And I was too young to really know what was going on fully, right? Because I was just there, I was hanging out with my friends. But then I thought that the amount of work I was putting in was just what other people had to do as well. So, so you, sorry to interrupt you for a minute, but yeah. so you, how old were you when you were tested for your learning sort of capabilities? Grade three was the first time. I don't know. How and that was through the public school system, right? Yes. Yeah. So do you remember feeling like you were like not good enough or do you remember feeling any sense of I'm not normal and that's bad ever? Yes. Oh yeah. Really? 100%. I did because I knew that I learned different and it now where I am is I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I need. I'm going to like, I'm going to reach out for the accommodations that I need, like um, reading assistant and, you know, notes before class, things like that. So now I don't care about that. But at the beginning, I knew that something was different with me and I felt different because, you know, sometimes there was those group of kids that had to go and do something else into a different room. And there's those group of kids that had to go and get extra reading help. That was always me. And I did feel, I tried not to let it bug me, but it did because, you know, you just feel different. You don't feel mm -hmm. like everyone else. And it's, it's, it's really difficult because as much as I was trying to fit in and show everybody that, you know, I, I can do it. I did it. You know, I was really pushing myself. And so it was just, yeah. So yes, to answer your question. Yes, I did feel like a, the weirdo and all that. So well, I just I want you to take us like, you know, I want to really dive into the emotion because I, I, I just trying to come up with a title for this um, interview. And I and I just the words missing the target really, um, really came to me because I do know a lot of people are naturally very hard on themselves when they feel like they've missed the target. And sometimes the target has not been set by themselves. The target's been set by others. For example, grade three, you didn't set those targets for yourself. The school system did. And if you weren't meeting those targets, it wasn't even necessarily like something you wanted to do for yourself, but you were being told that you weren't hitting the target, you know? Yeah. And so, and, and I just think that the stuff that happens to us in childhood, and you're going to absolutely nail this with your story when I shut up and let you talk again, but you're, you, the stuff that happens to us in our childhood, it, it changes us for life. It, it builds yeah. scar tissue around who we really, really are deep down. Yeah. And so I really just wanted to dig in a little deeper to that first round of testing that you did when you were in grade three, because I, I think that that, um, that probably has a lot to do with decisions you've made and reactions that you felt like, you know, triggers, I guess we could use that word later yeah. in life. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I always felt like a part of me had to hide that, you know, I was really like ashamed and I was like, Oh, this is like my, this, I just can't do it. I can't do it the same way. And that's almost like, and that's what they're telling you. That's what I was yeah. being told, which sucks. Yeah. They should never tell anyone that that's never. no, it, you should never feel like that. And there's points in my elementary journey where I was so frustrated with the way that they were not just treating me, but other people who have learning disabilities. But yeah. again, at that time, I wasn't 
who the person I am today. So I didn't have enough of that confidence to push me in mm -hmm. that direction. So yeah. by grade six, my parents were like, this is enough. It's time to get you privately tested. You know, mm -hmm. we, we said like, let's get tested again. The private sector's like, well, it's going to be a couple years. And it's like, my parents were like, well, a couple years is not going to work out. So what they did is they got me privately tested. I do remember that. It was in Bears Paw. If any of you guys are in Calgary, Coffern area, you know what I'm talking about. It was like this little school, old school and by Bears Paw, but across from Bears Paw. And it was, I remember it was so interesting, but it was like the that's the one I really remember, but it was, it was just a very interesting experience to, it was kind of like the first step for me to be really aware of what I need and what is kind of going on inside my head. And so that year I went to Foothills Academy, which is a school in Calgary, which is special for kids with learning disability. And I, um, once I was diagnosed with dyslexia, poor working memory and test anxiety, it was now I was eligible to apply to Foothills Academy. So I went for a little test day. It was super awesome. I, I loved it. It was different. It was really different than your regular school system because there's like 10 kids in a class. You know, there's two teachers in the classroom. It was so different. And and it was like so welcoming, which <laughs> was like so refreshing. So it was different. It was new, but it was so exciting all at the same time. And I think the biggest transition from going to Foothills Academy for me was that I learned that my disabilities were actually my abilities. They were my superpowers. I always say that now because they really showed me that you can do everything that anyone else can do, a regular student can do, but I just needed some tools to help me get there, right? So I started shifting this mindset and starting to create, I guess, this, this, this beautiful mindset that I could do anything I wanted to do, but I just needed some of the tools to help me get there. So what did those yeah. look like? It's kind of like some timetable sheets because my basic math skills are not the greatest, but you give me a huge, super huge, big math problem. I got it. I can solve it. Um, yeah. It was just more of those basic, um, those basic math skills. And, um, where was I going with this? <laughs> Hold on, I lost my well, okay, I'm going to dive in and I'm yeah. going to dive in and ask again. I'm going to ask, I, I feel like, I feel like when you get pulled out of the public school system and put into a different class, totally different class setting, different school, different teaching style, everything that that would be exciting. But did you ever feel like what happened with your friends from public school? Like what happened with your friends that you'd made? What was it grade four or five that you started at Foothills? Grade seven. So I oh, grade seven. Of, so there's quite a bit of time passed between your testing in grade three to yeah. being tested again in what, grade six? Yeah. And then I moved uh -huh. right after that year. So for my school, it was grade six was like the end of like, that was the last grade that physical school went to. And then you go to the high school next for Cochrane. So everyone was already leaving that school. So for me, it felt like a very perfect time to leave. Okay. And I thought that I had all the friends in the world. I had a really great group of friends. I felt pretty popular, not gonna lie. Like I felt by grade six, I felt like I built a really great group of friends. And um, then what happened was, it was interesting because what when you move, it really tests your friendship with people. Yeah. Because it's like you see who your true friends are. And that's kind of mm. with a lot of situations, not just moving schools, but it's a big one. And so I was actually lucky enough to have a few friends that, you know, still reach out to me. Some of my best friends in elementary are still my best friends now. You know, Brooke, she's like, yeah. What was funny, we actually didn't hang out that much in elementary, but as soon as I left, it was like, it brought us together and it was amazing. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So I did lose some friends and it was a little bit different, but just the type of person that I am, I was just like, I was ready. I was like, I'm okay with whatever's thrown at me next kind of thing. So I did lose some friends. I still stayed in contact with some friends and it just it really showed who who your friends are at the end of the day it just really showed that yeah and, uh, yeah i'm very grateful because they're still in my life today which is very rare you don't hear people usually 
keeping their elementary friends and I know I'm only 19 but <laughs> it's still it's still like it's so great for me because I would just I always felt like I had people um I always felt like I had people back at home so I never really felt alone which was really good so yeah okay. yeah and you're such a you're such a true friend you're you're the person who puts in lots of effort and you yeah. really listen to people and if they need something you're there and so that can be uh that can feel really icky though when you when you do that for someone who all of a sudden drops you like a hot potato right because you've now moved from their school or something's changed yeah. in your world or whatever right or you say oh it turns out i have you know learning disabilities and i'm gonna go to a different school and all of a sudden your friends are kind of like oh that's weird i'm not gonna be your friend anymore whatever right like yeah who knows but anyways i just want to i want to um keep going with your story um because i do find it very interesting how you you really had this um it sounds like you really had this sense of i'm different i have to work harder to achieve things that others don't have to work as hard to achieve you learn that about yourself at a young age and then you go into this new school and you have the excitement and the realization of i can do anything yeah. my learning disabilities are not going to stop me from achieving whatever my dreams are and even if they're the same dreams that someone else has that has no le learning disabilities, we can all get there. It's just going to look different on the journey. So now you know that. So now what do you do? Like you start busting your ass. You start working harder than ever before. You start setting these really high goals for yourself. Like tell us more about your mindset in the new school and how you reacted to this new environment and new learning experience. Absolutely. So after a year, I was like, seeing there was like two kids in my class that were achieving like high 90s and I was like ooh, that looks kind of cool and then um I was like oh there's an award ceremony at the end of the year which I didn't know about obviously until the end of the year and so they were rewarded for getting um the highest average it's called the academic achievement award and I was like I want that and that was it. That's, I wanted that. So my goals went from, <laughs> you know, just surviving school to I am going to excel and kill it. And I saw my two peers and I was always competing with them. I was like, which this also, I need to just I'm acknowledge sorry. that. I'm sorry for laughing, but I just, I'm just telling a quick story about competing in Selena. So Selena and I recently played cards <laughs> together for the first time. <laughs> I'm competitive. Selena um, is competitive and I love it. And it's so funny. Okay, anyways, yeah. yeah we so competitive, Selena. I was playing, we were playing cards. There's a way to get back in and I was doing anything to get back in. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So I definitely have a competitive side to me, um, which is great. But yeah. so this, this um, drive inside of me created something beautiful, but also created a monster. Um, it created the monster of perfectionism. If it wasn't a hundred, it wasn't enough anymore. Before it was like, if it's a, you know, just a 60, 70, anything really didn't, I always had like a perfectionism in me, but yeah. it was amplified through this goal because it was, it became nothing is enough anymore unless it is absolutely perfect because I wanted to get this academic achievement award. So grade eight goes by and I didn't get the award. They beat me by a few percents and I was like, fine, that's all right. Okay. I'm going to work even harder next year. So I go even harder and while I'm doing school, I'm also doing like four extracurriculars. I'm playing hockey, I'm singing, I'm doing 4-H and then I started my business in grade 10. So a few years later, but I was doing lots of extracurriculars at the same time as my schoolwork. So I became this like super hybrid of a human where every single second of my day was used. And I never took care of myself properly. There was lots of issues. I'm not going to get too much into those because I'll talk about them another time. But there was a lots of issues that ar arised with the way that I was working and the way that I was functioning as a person. And so I was just like at it. I was like, I got to get it. So the next year, I got it. The year after that, I got it again. And I also so you got, got it. You, you, what, you got the award for what's the award called? academic achievement award academic achievement award and so and there's one there's one given out in the entire school yes 
Yeah, there's one. And there was also a perseverance, a citizenship, and I believe there's another one. So the first year I got the perseverance award and that was like, yay. But like, I want but that's I, not the one I wanted. Yeah. So it kind of uh. like skimmed over that accomplishment and went like, nah. And then the next year I got the achievement award and I can't even remember, honestly, at this point, I got a few awards at the end of the year, but, um, in grade 11, by grade 11, I got the academic achievement award and the citizenship award. And that's when things started to change because I was actually more proud of getting the citizenship award because that's really like going out, being a force for good, essentially. Yeah, that's and, about other people. So it's yeah. interesting that you picked up on that and you were like, I actually want to be someone who lifts others up and helps versus just, I have great marks in my classes. Like, so that's yeah. really cool that you shifted yeah. that. Yeah. So there was lots of, there was lots of uh, friend things, you know, with being at a school, a small school, you go through mm -hmm. friends. At least I went through them really quickly. I went through the girls and I was like, mm, don't love it. Switch to the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, mm, just as much drama. So, so yeah, so it was, it was all, all part of the learning experience. Um, but I really want to get into the story about valedictorian and that. So now you kind of have a little bit of background. You know, um, as soon as I got the first achievement award, my new goal was valedictorian. And it was kind of like, if you look at like my um, junior high goal sheets, they made us do these things. It, de it, it actually says that I wanted valedictorian on it. And, um, so, you know, grade 10, I started experience, experiencing some really hard times with my friends and the school offered counseling for me. So then, um, you know, I just became even more aware of what I was doing. And, I, and I've, I've always had to be super aware of what I need, what's happening. But sometimes I always didn't take action depending on that, if that makes sense. So I, I feel like we're going to need to dig a little deeper into that. I yeah. don't really fully understand what okay, you're talking so, about. Can you just, so, yeah. I had to have self-awareness, like crazy self-awareness, because I needed to know when I needed help and I needed to know what, you know, like what things felt like. And I started really listening to what was going on inside my head. But then okay. sometimes I wouldn't always act on those things. Like, you know, I need to take a break. No, you don't. Bye. Like, that's what yeah. I meant when I didn't take action on it. So so like boundaries is kind of a thing like you weren't putting up boundaries when you were getting pushed too far by people or by your stand like your high need for achievements so you started learning in this counseling how to do that or what was the counseling yeah. helping you with this counseling was helping me with a whole bunch of things with friends but also just it was amplifying yes creating boundaries and helping me you know just learn more about myself if that makes right sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I'm very okay. opening. I'm very open about going to counseling because I genuinely find it's the best thing because it really helps mm -hmm. me. I I'm definitely a talker. I process things through talking. So it was like something that's really that was really big for me. And I'm open about it because I don't think there's anything to be ashamed about. It's just something that I use as a tool. So I just how did you get to that point, though, like where you knew you needed the counseling? Like, what conversations went on or what aha moments did you have that got you to the point where you're like, I'm going to book an appointment with a counselor? My teacher. So at Foothills Academy, the teachers are amazing. They really do care about you and they, they're watching, they see, they can see what's happening. They're not dumb. So they were like starting to talk to me about like, do you think this might be a good option for you? Like they were, there's multiple parts in my story where they were like, are you okay? And we can see what you're doing. And we like, they cared. They're like, we what do you think they saw? Them. They, what do you think they saw that triggered them to be concerned about you? Um, just that I just, I, I believe that it was, I was giving way too much of myself to others, to my friends, mm. to school. And it was like, I feel like them being older, they could, you know, some of them could see themselves in me. Some of them, you know, they were, they know what burnout looks like and they're just genuinely worried about me as a person. Right. 
and they just didn't want to see me. So I think they saw how hard I was working and how hard I was going and how my wheels were always moving 110% all the time. So they were the ones who brought up the conversation. And then I was like, yes. And since I'm always think I can learn and grow, I, I think I'm like a very life, lifelong learner. I love it. So I was just down with it. And I knew that it would end up helping me in the long So way. your immediate reaction to your teacher, one teacher starting out, I guess, saying yeah, to you, like, I think you need some help. And your I immediate like, reaction to that was, I like, was like, okay. Yeah, I was like, really? Yes. I so were you kind of like looking for help then, but you just didn't know what or like, cause I, I find it interesting that you were so quick to just be like, yeah, sure. Like, I think a lot of people was, back to grade three would be kind of like, are you saying there's something wrong with me? Like, are you saying that I'm not okay? Right. But I didn't see it like that. I didn't wow. see it like that at all because I was really just like, this is going to help me so much. And you know what I was, I knew because I am very self-aware things weren't going right. Things were not going right. And I was taking on too much. And I didn't know how to deal it because I know a lot of people might be able to relate with this is sometimes I need people to be like, sit down, don't do anything. Look at the wall and don't do any work. I needed that because my head's telling me, no, you have to go. The perfectionist side of me is like, you have to get up. You have to keep going. You have to do all these things. And the word you have is very big in my brain because it was like, you got to do this. So when, when, whenever anyone was like, you know, you might need to get some help. I was like, yes, you're right. I always think like, sometimes wow. I just need that little push. And I, I don't, I thought that was a little bit normal, but I'm, I'm feeling like you're just like, oh, no, no, I don't think it's not normal. I think it's just so cool. I think it's got a lot to do with your parents and the way they raised you. And they've done such a fantastic job. And I think, you know, the fact that they, they said, K public school system, you suck. <laughs> they didn't say yeah. that. But you know what I mean? Like, they were like okay, she's going to get tested on our terms because she's our daughter. And we're going to make sure that we know for sure that she's in the right hands. They did that for you. And that was like another kind of like someone saying you need help. And you were kind of like, okay, let's go do this new round of testing yeah. in grade six or whatever. And that, like, the, it's, it's, so it sounds to me like your brain in that moment with your teacher could have went back to grade three or it could have went back to grade six. And it sounds like it kind of went back to grade six where it's like, last time someone told me I needed help, I ended up at this amazing school and I ended up with all this help and I ended up with all these new tools. So, like, this is probably going to, like, your brain went to the, yeah. to the positive, which is yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people, when they get told that they, they're glitching out and they need to change some things with the help of a counselor, a lot of people are like, what me no no like, exactly you know, no, like, yeah sure right. sign me up <laughs> yeah yeah no so. and, I, and I think that has a lot to do you're right with my parents but also just that I have such a like I genuinely want to be the best version of myself mm -hmm. and so I know that getting help from others is going to help me get to that point so yeah cool yeah. So you go, you start counseling, you're learning about boundaries, you're yeah. learning about how to basically um, be happier with maybe achieving less or is no, that not, not even there a yet. Not there yet. <laughs> mostly focused on social aspects. Okay. Um, and, you know, sometimes those kind of things would pop up here and there, but nothing really big. Um, but when I got to grade 11, um, at the end of the year, you know, like I wanted valedictorian with my whole being. I was like, I need this. I need it. I need it to prove myself. So here's, this is the thing. I yeah. I'm never, really curious to know why you wanted that so bad. So I could, I, I was challenged by one of my friends and they were like, why do you want it so bad? And I'm like, I don't know. It's in me. I don't know why I want it. So again, I had an opportunity in counseling to really dig, dig, dig deeper into that. And it mm -hmm. turned out to be a whole bunch of different things. I always say it's like a pie chart. You got slivers of things. And so the first thing, um, which is the tiniest sliver was to just prove myself to my parents. You know, they had put in all the money, all the work for me. And I just wanted it to be like, Look at me. Not only did I just do it, I did it. Like I did Yeah, you I made a good investment. 
Yeah, I and, am a good investment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then there was a part part of me that was like, I wanted to have this a part of my message, my story that mm. was like, you can do anything you put your mind to and achieve anything you want to achieve if you put the work in. And it was mm. supposed to be, which it still is, it's supposed to be a part of my story, but it was like, it was like the top of the mountain for me. So this is like mm -hmm. one of my things that I want, want people to take away from this. But it was like the top of the mountain. So at the top of the mountain, there was a big bright sign that said valedictorian. And there was happiness attached to it. it. There was the feeling of being enough to it. And I'd be climbing that mountain trying to get there. And I'd stumble a little. But it's okay. I got back up. I kept going. I kept going. And it was so close. I could like touch it. And it got ripped away from me out of my control. One second. Okay. So I find this very, very interesting. You painted a picture of the achievement. Yeah. You decided how you thought you were going to feel when yeah. you achieved it. You had no proof of that. Nope. No you, proof. you never asked anyone who would achieve valedictorian. Hey, when you finally achieved it, like on a scale of one to 10, how great was that? And then maybe, for example, did it help you in any other ways in your life? Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, and I feel like this is something we need to dig into a little bit because how many times in our lives do we do that? Do we decide that this achievement is worth sacrificing sleep, friendships, health, yeah. <laughs> time, maybe time having fun like a lot of high school kids <laughs> do? Know, yeah. Sacrificing all these things to achieve this thing that we really think is going to bring us this bullet point list of check, 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 check. Yeah. And ultimately it probably won't. So I think it, it, I think it's important. I know you, you've, you've um, been more careful in your life since the valedictorian incident with deciding what you want to work hard for. And you've been yeah. careful about going full force into something without really percolating on it first and even pros and cons lists. And, tactical you know writing exercises to figure out where you should be going and what is my purpose and is that in line with my purpose should i be chasing that dream so um i just wanted to, to pause you there because i thought it was interesting how you were like valedictorian is gonna well, do this, no, this, yeah. this for me <laughs> yeah i know and this is this is the point of it so you know how many times do we say like when I have blank, I will be happy. Or when I have blank, I'll be successful. Or when I have blank, I will be enough. And I think what we what we do is we kind of sabotage ourselves because we 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 need to be happy throughout the journey. We need to choose to be joyful, choose to be happy. But we all do it. We're like, I did it for the longest time. When I graduate, then my life will start. That's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought and you know then I'll be my happiest self then I'll be able to do all the things that I wanted to do but I could have started that day and so I think that so many things happen like that and I was asked the question like you know what what would have happened if you got valedictorian right and I was like oh I would have probably felt really good for at least a month but I think deep down the issues that I was dealing with of perfectionism not being enough all those things, they're still there. It didn't like solve all those problems. They're still present. And so I definitely like that was like a big, big takeaway. And I was listening to this podcast and I was like, jaw dropped. I was like, this applies to my life as a whole and more than ever. And it was that we use the result of an activity or an action to measure like how well we're living or how successful we are or if we're enough. And so for me, the result was valedictorian. The result right. was if I got valedictorian, I measured getting valedictorian with the amount of success and who I was in that. And if I was enough, all of those things, all of those things that I mentioned, that's what I did. I used it to measure it. And when I didn't get it, it was like, oh my goodness, who am I? You know, I was like, what, what is going on? It was, it was this big thing of where I put so much into getting valedictorian. 
that when I didn't get it, it was the most, it was so devastating. And I had done a full, a full year of work in the counseling sessions on really breaking down why I want it, how I can deal with it if I don't get it. Because at the end of grade 11, it was right before summer, I remember this, I was sitting down and one of my teachers again, she was like, we're concerned about you because we know how bad you want it. We know you deserve it. But at the end of the day, you may not get it because it can go to a student vote. And that was the first time anybody had ever said, well, maybe not ever, but maybe it was like the only time I'd actually listened to that. Because I knew it went to a vote, but I was confident in myself that I was like, no, this is not going to affect it. I will get it. I just thought. So you was, thought you would get it even if it went to a vote or you're, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I was just so, I was like, it's, I, I just, I wanted it that bad. And it's yeah. somebody outside of my situation again, you know, to say yeah. like, we're, we're worried about you. You know, we see yeah. what, what you have done to achieve things in the past. And we want you to take care of yourself. So what wow. I did over the summer is I really sat with that. I remember sitting in our classroom. I'm bawling my eyes out. Because what if? What if? <laughs> and you don't know. And so yeah. I really reflected over the summer. And I had tried to prepare myself for dealing with it. And yeah. this is where one of your points comes in again. Is I had changed over the summer. You know, I could never fully prepare myself for what had happened. But I had came in with a different attitude than I had any other year. I was very compassionate with myself. And I was like, I don't need this. I just tried to keep telling myself that my worth is not based on valedictorian. Now, this didn't work 100%. And it was very difficult for me. But here's why. Because I had come back to school my first day of grade 12 the bell hadn't even rung for the day to start. And somebody said to me, I'm not going to vote for you. Because one time I opened my mouth and said, they're like, people ask me all the time, like, why do you work so hard? Like what it, I said, well, it's because I want valedictorian. And then I, people use that to really bully me. And it was hard because I had done all of this reflection and all of this inner work. And then I came back to the place where everybody knew what I was like before mm -hmm. and pushed me so hard into that direction. So every mm -hmm. time I took one step forward on it's okay not to get it, it was another step back every time somebody made a comment like that because it did bug me. Because why would you say that? What does yeah. that matter? Like, it doesn't matter to me. Who? Well, no, it matters to me. But yeah. it, it's... It, it, it was different. So every time I tried to change, I, my own expectations of myself changed, but the expectations that I was feeling from my peers had not changed. Does and I, and I have to jump in for a second here because my gut reaction when I hear that, and by the way, you're so brave and you're so smart. And I just am like, I, I can feel the energy of this story you're sharing rippling through so many people right now. So you're, you're, you're doing an amazing job, Selena. But like when someone says to me, I'm not going to vote for you. I want it bad now, mostly just to throw it in your face. There was a part I of have <laughs> achieved so many things for the number one reason to show the naysayers that I can to show anyone who's ever rejected me or ever told me I couldn't or ever questioned my ability to achieve things. I've done it quite often for those reasons, <laughs> more no, than anything no, else. And I'm willing to admit that those because I know words. that they were good things, but. No, those yeah. exact words have come out of my mouth because that was one of the reasons why I wanted valedictorian. How many people, including my own self, told me I couldn't do it? And I mm -hmm. was trying to prove all of them wrong. Every mm -hmm. teacher that said, I'm just slow and I'm not going to make it as far as I think, like, I was, my siblings were a big thing too, always questioning my intelligence. I was like, I'm going to prove to you that I am more than that. Like I'm going to, and I a hundred percent 
it, it did, but when it got to that point, it was a little bit different, but 100%, I agree that it makes me want to, <laughs> it makes me want to get it and prove to people. I was always trying to prove to people, but I was also trying to get others approval. Yeah. I'm a person yeah. pleaser. I am. I know that. Yeah, but, I'm the same way. I'm 100% yeah. the same way. Yep. And I, I was fed off of others' <laughs> approval. That's why all those awards before Valedictorian, mm -hmm. they just kept feeding the beast. They were like, yeah. yes, you've gotten this award for three years. Like, you can, and all this thing, but I just think that it's, yeah, it's, it's so crazy, but yes, I, I a hundred percent agree with your point. Um, yeah, I like that you, I like that you're willing to admit that too, because I no, think a lot of people just aren't willing to admit that they do things to throw it in other people's faces. No. Yeah. And <laughs> ultimately I still think that, it, you know, a lot of the things that I've done that were to throw it in other people's faces, they were good things. And the ripple effect of those things um, was powerful for um, a lot of other a lot of other people, and I know this is true for you too because we've talked about it. Is eventually you start to realize what you're doing that's working and what you're doing that's changing other people's lives, and your focus shifts because you're now focused on the purpose of your life. You're not focused on throwing in other people's faces, but you've learned that you have the skills to kick ass because your original goal was to throw in their face but now you've got the skill set it doesn't matter how you gain the skill set yes. or gain the confidence <clears throat> in your abilities now you have them and now you can refocus your energy on a different yes. purpose which is not to throw it in people's faces and do even bigger more amazing things because your heart's in the right place and it's not about achievement anymore it's about knowing you could rise to the occasion and kick ass and it's not for you and so I think it's really cool that you, yeah, that you're, um, that you're honest about the fact that those people saying that to you on day one before the bell rang, I'm not going to vote for you. And then you being like, well, I don't need your vote. Hold yeah. my beer. Watch this. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm going to keep being amazing. <laughs> but I think like what you're saying is that like the outcome is not connected to like our quality of behavior. Like, you know, I, I was like, I had put so much work, so much effort. I had gotten crazy work ethic from all of this. And I thought for a second there, what was that all for? But then I'm like, no, just because I didn't get it doesn't mean my quality was my behaviors and the quality of that was not right. And I proved this to myself through a little bit of comparison, but it's a, a little bit of healthy comparison. There's so much more of this story to come, you guys. This is like, I feel like we're probably not even halfway through. I mean, I have so many questions for you right now. I know, I know. But so I just have to say this one thing is that I was, I was super defeated when this all happened. Yeah. But yeah. I thought, why? did this why do bad things happen to good people that was ultimately that was so you're talking like right now are you sharing about when you eventually at the end of grade 12 found out like okay like take us back to the day okay. one i want to go yeah. back take yeah, us back to day one so yeah. they're like yeah, i'm not going to vote for you i yeah. want to dive into that a little bit more because it sounds like you had surrounded yourself with some people who ultimately turned out to be shitty friends and they turn out to be maybe kind of shitty humans. I'm not saying that they're that way now because I would never judge someone based on who they are in high school because we're all very different now. Mm -hmm. um, people my age, not your age necessarily. But, um, but the bullying thing that you touched on is very interesting to me because I think when we feel bullied, it's usually because the people that are around us in our environment are like, they're in our environment and in, in, in for example, you, you can't not see those people every day because you have to go to school. Yeah. So you were stuck seeing these assholes, for lack of a better word, who were literally, their number one goal was to just beat you down a little bit. And who knows what was going on in their home life that caused right. them to treat you like that. Yeah. But that, that's no excuse. You, like, you don't do that to people. Why on earth would they ever attack you like that? And then how did you cope with that throughout your grade 12 year? It was difficult. It was very difficult. And um, I didn't even classify it as bullying until I talked to others because I was just like, 
you know, there's a few people, they're just picking on me, it's fine. And I didn't let it bother me because I knew within that it's not coming, you know, it's coming from something, their insecurities, I knew that. And I was like, just defending the people who were bullying me. And then I talked to a couple people, including you, and you're like, Selena, <laughs> what? These people are so, like, they're being so mean to you, and you're defending them, and all these things. And so it was, I didn't see it as bullying when I was in grade 12. Um, but yes, it was very hard. There was days when I just wanted to stay in my bed, never go to school again. I was so done with everyone. Not only was I a year older than probably a little bit um, over half of them. So I was already a little bit more mature. I was just sick of the immaturity from all of them. I felt more disconnected from every single per person in there. And it was just this ongoing battle. I genuinely don't know why I how I kept going. But there was lots of different little trips that I was taking. Like I went to Guatemala, I went to the US for my business. And these were the most amazing opportunities for me to escape what I was feeling. Okay. And they helped me give a little bit of a break. And uh, there was just there was so many things that happened in my grade 12 year that I just I don't even know. Like I was advocating for a better grad. And people that I had gathered because you know, two voices is stronger than one, five voices are stronger than one. I had advocated for this years before. No, no one listened. So I got my peeps. I got the girls together because they care about grad. And I got them together. We had a meeting. We changed things. We got the grad actually changed, which ended up never happening anyways, um, because they shoved everything into one night. And um, most schools do it in two days. So and I felt like that was a little bit more special. So I was really pushing for that. And I would go into a meeting with all the grade 12s. I went into a meeting with all the grade 12s. And everyone is livid. Like even the people who came with me to the meeting were not taking the credit for doing that. People were so upset. They were so upset and I didn't understand it. And why were they upset? I, I don't know. I don't know why they were upset, honestly. And they were just like, oh, it makes it more of a thing. And it's like- They were upset because you got your way? Probably, probably. Because I, you stood up for something you believed in and rallied and like put effort in and made the change happen? Yeah. People, I, I think just at the end of the day, it was just that people, most of the people there didn't care about graduation as much as me. I was there, I was like, first of all, we all have learning disabilities and that's a huge accomplishment. It's a little bit, it's just huge. It's a huge ac accomplishment to finish high school with all the struggles that we had. And I was mm -hmm. so passionate about giving us something to really celebrate. And the fact is that most of those kids aren't gonna graduate from, um, from university. So why not make it so special? I was not looking out for myself here. I was not just like, yes, I wanted that. But I was also saying like, why don't we celebrate our achievements a little bit more? So people were so mad and I was just watching people tear down teachers for no reason. And I was just disgusted. I was so disappointed. And one of my good buddies, which threw me over the edge, I was done. I got out of that room and I went straight down into my counseling room and I just started crying because when they said, someone was like, well, whose idea was this? He went like this, opened himself up, looked down at me. And I was like, so there was multiple points where I was wow. ready to just walk outside of the school and just be done because it was so hard to be around people who just, they weren't first of all on the same level as me. And it was just like, it was this constant battle. The few, the, my best friend that did that to me, we had been talking for months because I decided to put a boundary up that, you know, I deserve more from my friends because I'm giving way too much and not receiving anything. And that mm -hmm. kind of sounds a little greedy, but sometimes we have to do that because I was like, I deserve more. So if you don't talk to me, I'm not going to talk to you. And we didn't talk for months until this whole valedictorian COVID thing happened. 
And so I'm going through and I'm sitting alone. I'm doing things alone. And I'm just like, I'm just, I'm done. I'm so done that I just, I just go to school. I was empty. I was not filled at all. I was working my hardest and I was just not, I was just not me. I just didn't feel good. But I just, like you said, it's school. You have to keep going. And I say a lot in a lot of ways. I know COVID has brought a lot of bad things, but I feel like in my life, the universe was kind of looking out for me. And this will make more sense as I keep going. So I had started hanging out with some of the younger kids because shocker, they were actually more mature than my grade. So two years younger were more um, mature. I had a um, we did like this uh, program together. I did it with the younger kids. So I felt very connected to a few of them. I started hanging out with them instead. And I really realized the difference that good people who lift you up instead of tear you down, how much of an effect that has on you. So I, I was just going through the motions, just doing it. I just need to finish this year. And it happened on the Thursday before the Sunday lockdown of COVID, the very first one on March 13th, I think, something around there. Mm -hmm. So yep. it was weird the way that my school handled this whole valedictorian thing. They had said, we had all the grade 12s in a room. They're like, who wants to do this speech? Raise your hand. Okay, now who wants valedictorian? What? Different way of doing it. So people, you know, they start saying little names, right? They're like, oh, Selena, Selena. And obviously I'm confident. I know what I want. So I'm like, yes, put my name down, which was weird. And there was like six other people who had done this. And one of my um, friends, uh, not close friends, but we had been like just friends throughout the whole year. And um, we had all of our classes together and everything. Um, he was like my main competitor and he had told me multiple times before that he wasn't going to run and he thought that I deserved it and all this stuff. And so I was feeling pretty confident until his name went up. Um, and, and I was like, uh, what? Like, I was just shocked because he had told me these things and then his name got put up on the thing. So Anyways, if you, that's how it went, you go back to your class, they were going to check the grades. Now, if the grades were really cl close, it would go to a student vote. If it's like 5% higher, it's a no brainer. You are just valedictorian. So yeah. we, there was three people who were all 0.5 away from each other. I believe it was like 90.5, 89. So it was like, it was like, we were, there's three of us. If one girl, me, and then two boys, we were all really, really close to each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was just like, I was, I was a hot mess that whole day because they were doing it like a, like an election vote. Right. But and you walked into school that morning, not knowing any of this was going to happen. No, no, I had no idea. They didn't give us any, they didn't give us any warning, nothing. They started dealing with all this grad stuff. I thought it was kind of late, but you know, whatever, it's fine. So it was like all this stuff. And I'm just like, Whoa, okay. So the next day I knew that there was going to be some sort of voting thing. Yeah. And it comes to my turn to vote. And we literally get these little pieces of paper that have people's names on them. Cause it was like multiple people wanted to do like, t um, appreciation to the teachers, appreciation to the parents. So we had to now vote for all of these people. And there was a valedictorian one. And I was just like, it was me, this one guy, that one guy that was my friend that said he wouldn't do it, and this other one. And I knew that it was really between me and him. And I was a hot mess. This is like during exams too, like the worst time to do this. So I have to write this English exam and all I can think about is all these little vote ballots going around the school. You don't really even have time to like campaign yourself, I guess. And since I didn't have any really good buddies, you know, there was nobody like jacking me up kind of thing. Like there was like, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was just an interesting experience. And I was like, I was in tears because I was, I just couldn't handle the pressure of not knowing what was- And having happen. no control, not even like you said, not being able to do anything. Yeah, I literally couldn't do anything. Just putting and it into the hands. One of the worst parts about it. 
because no matter how much I wanted to control it, I had no control. I couldn't do anything to change the outcome of this. So oh. I was just like, oh my goodness. I'm I'm like filled with anxiety. And you're, and you're crying all day because you think I'm not going to get it or because I don't have any control or like all I, of the above. All of the above. I don't know. Part of myself was telling me you're going to get it. Part of it was like, don't feel that way. You're setting yourself up for failure. It oh, was like yeah. this internal battle of what the heck am I supposed to feel at this moment? And I'm an emotional person, so tears just naturally came out of me. Yeah. And I was just in so much stress. And then nobody knows when these votes are going to be counted. Nobody knows what's going to happen. So I'm just, like, waiting. Like, what's happening? I go home. Nothing's been released. So then it's Thursday. I go to school. I'm like, what is going on? I'm just as anxious. I'm literally like, what's happening? And I remember I went down to leadership. And I was doing all like I'm teaching the kids and everything. And I come back up the stairs and I go into my homeroom because we have homeroom at the end of the day and at the beginning. And not, I'm not lying, everybody in my homeroom was like circled like this, circled around the front door, waiting for me to come in there. All my peers. And they were like, did you hear the news about valedictorian? Because I was involved, I was busy in leadership. So I hadn't heard anything. I wasn't with my other peers. I'm like one of the, um, there's two grade 12s in leadership. So I was not with anybody, didn't know anything. And I came up and I walk into the classroom with this circle of all my peers, the people who said, I'm not going to vote for you. The people who wanted to get a reaction out of me. Oh. And they said, they said, that that kid, one of my friends said that, well, that, that one that was my friend who said he wasn't going to apply, who said he, you know, I, I could have never expected this layer to be added on how I was going to feel. And they said, Jackson got valedictorian. So immediately, what do I do? Snap of a finger. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Where is he? I want to congratulate him. So you just put yourself into game face mode and just, wow. What did, they want? what did they want? They wow, but that's so freaking mature and amazing. Like, oh my gosh, you just crushed it. Like, that's so, I mean, so I know hard. it's it important so to be hard, real though. and whatever, but like, you know, you took the high road, which I am not very good at. So that is awesome. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I didn't even know though. It was like within seconds. I didn't even really know what was happening. And I was just like, where is he? I want to congratulate him. Like, that's so amazing. And I walked out <laughs> because, and I was, and they were all like, damn it. She didn't cry. Yeah. We didn't get to see anything. That was the worst reaction ever. I don't know what they said. I don't want to know what they said. Kids are such assholes. Like, oh my God. I can't imagine standing around waiting for you like that. Like that is such a dick move. Like, Whoever you kids were that were doing that, I hope you're ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So I, I left that. I, I wanted to hear it from a teacher. You were kind of like, I wonder if this is even true. It is. <laughs> I think it is. So I'm looking for a teacher. I'm looking. No, for sorry. No, what I meant was, oh. what I meant was I wondered, like, I bet you were kind of oh, yeah. wondering, like, Yes. I, is this really true or was that a prank? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, were you kind of wondering? Because I don't trust them. I didn't trust them. That's the blank point. I did not trust them. And I was like, they could just be saying anything they want. So I was looking for a teacher to tell me the hard, cold facts. And I was looking specifically for the girl who took the ballots. And I couldn't find anyone. And then I see this this guy, I'm sorry, I almost said his name. <laughs> okay, good. This person. And um, he was walking with his girlfriend and the principal and it was like patting on the back and all this. And I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure this is real. And then he walks by one of his teacher's um, classrooms like, oh, I'm so proud of you, buddy. And that's where it started to get even harder because I wanted to have that I did I genuinely wanted that because I was doing it 
for myself, but I was also doing it for others, like I said. And I wanted those people to be like, good job to me, not to him. And so I was like, whew, okay, Selena, keep it together, keep it together. So these oh. friends that I haven't talked to, right, those friends that I referred to that I haven't talked mm -hmm. to for a few months, yeah. they knew how important this was to me. They truly did. Like, I have talked to them about it a lot, and they knew yeah. what this meant, and they didn't even come up to me and ask me if I was okay. They didn't even say anything to me. They couldn't even have the balls. That's the right word. They didn't even have the balls to come up to me and be like, are you okay? We know how hard that is for you. And if the tables were turned, I would have been- You would have been all over time. that. And I was getting, and they were right there. Like we were right beside oh. each other in our lockets, if lockers. We were right there. They could have easily, and I, you know, the my 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 compact my capacity to stay okay was not becoming okay anymore, and oh. I had needed to finish writing this exam. And my teacher said that I could do it the next day if I wanted to. I didn't need to do it that day. So she came up to me and said, like, I don't really think she knew what she was going on either. And she's like, Do you want to finish it? And I was like, No, um, maybe yes. And I was like, But like. Was I in the right stage to write an exam? Absolutely not. Was my heart full of pain? Yes. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe not. And she's like, okay, that's fine. You can write it tomorrow. Like very flexible, which was so amazing. And so I grabbed my backpack. I, I, I'm, I'm walking out of the school. I can picture this in my head. Walking out of school. And one of those younger, uh, one of my younger friends from the younger grade, they come to me. They put their arm around me and they say, I heard the news, are you okay? And immediately I'm like, <laughs> and I haven't even made it out of the school yet. And I am so not letting anybody see me like this from my grade. So I, I'm walking out of the school, a few more of my younger friends come, they're like, oh, we can see that you're not okay. Let's go, let's go. And I'm like running to my car at this point because I'm like, if anybody sees me like this, I can't, I can't, I can't. So I'm sitting in my car and I'm like, I can't, like, you know, the capacity is through the roof. I can't handle it. Yeah, you shouldn't be driving in that situation either, no. I suspect. Well, no, uh, what I did, my friends came into my car and I was like, everybody started coming out because it's the end of the day. I'm like, we just need to go. There's like this like little church across from our school. We just need to go to that parking lot so nobody can see me. So they were like, fine, let's go. So we went there and I'm so grateful for them because they like it. Yeah. I don't even know, but I was so grateful for them to be there with me and, you know, like change everything their whole evening to just stay there with me. And, and they didn't get it though. Like they were trying to comfort me and be funny, trying to like lift my, you know, what do you do when somebody's crying? You want to try to yeah. like lift their spirits. So they were like trying to be funny and I was like this is not a time for funniness in my head because yeah. I was like this it was it was what I've been wanting for four years I've been <clears throat> so much around it and then I've been working on it for so long and then for everything to blow up like that yeah the way that and the first time and the first time you ever shared this story with me, I remember you got to this part where you were talking about this day and the leaving the school and the, and I remember asking you, and I want you to answer this again for everyone uh, who's tuned in here. What was more devastating for you in not getting valedictorian and now looking back on it and maybe your answer is going to be, it's a 50, 50 thing, but I think there's two big, there's two really big shitty things that have gone on here. <laughs> Yeah. In this story, one is you didn't get valedictorian, yeah. right? You didn't get that stamp of approval, that certificate, that thing. But there's the other thing, which is there was a lot of people that kind of turned on you when you stuck your head out of the crowd and said, I want to do something big and I want to do something hard and I'm going to work my ass off 
And all of a sudden, it's like whack-a-mole. People are trying to whack you down. It's like that story about the, the monkeys. And then there's bananas at the top. And the monkeys keep pulling the other monkeys down. They're like, don't even try. Don't even bother trying. So, like, people can be so shitty to people when – and I've experienced that, too. And it's that bullying thing. And it's that people that you – and when you're a people pleaser, it's way harder to slough that off. Yeah. So I see, like, there's these two things. There's the actual achievement itself. And then there's the social friendship. Yeah. kind of heart stuff here like what was harder for you when you felt the loss the loss of the achievement or the loss of all these people who all of a sudden showed how shitty they really are at the front at the beginning i guess stages of it it was how like the social aspect of it it was how my good buddy who said he wasn't gonna apply and I had helped him with all of it. I, I would stay and help. I would like teach him math. I would help him with, I would help him a lot. And I, that, I, I don't know. I'm so loyal. I just, I could, I could never, I don't know. I'm just. Someone just, breaking their word like that. Someone lying to you like that feels and it wasn't so just, like, shitty. He said it one time. He said it multiple times over text in person. And for me. I was so mad at that because I was like, how do you tell someone that you're not going to do it and you know how bad they want it and then you do it and you win and you don't like, okay, if your opinion changed, please just tell me. I could have started to deal with layers. Like, just tell me that you actually want to run for it. Stop hiding and being like, mm, you know, and I was just, yeah, like, it was it's very, very like big brother like very big brother like that reality show and like what's that other one where they're all on the island and they're voting each other off uh, anyways like you know those reality uh, yeah, shows yeah. I know where what you're people about. are basically yeah. lying to each other to get them to yes. feel like yeah. they're on the same team but then they yeah. turn around and vote them yeah. off it was like it's and i don't know this person and i obviously don't know a lot about that kind of stuff but like it just really sounds like that person was maybe doing that and who knows right yeah but I that mean, but to feel, be at the receiving end of that, like, oh, yeah, I feel like he. I don't think I want to believe that he didn't do it on purpose, and you know he does deserve it just as much as I do. Which is yeah, hard and it's to not say. a question of whether or not he yeah. deserves it, and you've never once ever yeah. felt like he didn't deserve it, and that's the other thing about you that's really great. Yeah. It's the it's the feeling of of having people treat you in a way that you know you would never treat another person yeah it's like how can people yeah. be so mean yeah right yeah like and, and he oh my god he did feel bad about it and he did reach out to me and he wanted to talk to me and I was very like I don't want to I really yeah. don't want to but I sat down the day after on the phone with him and listened to what he had to say and he was you know saying what anyone would say in that situation like I'm sorry and I didn't mean to said so the first time the first thing that I when I got it the first thing I thought about was how I had treated you and I lied to you and and all these things and I I I believed him in a little bit but I can't believe him fully because he had just completely broken my trust well that's and the thing the it doesn't matter if he's telling the truth now or not the fact is he's not trustworthy and he's he not someone changed. that deserves to be trusted he could have this is the other thing. He could have backed out at any time. I'm not saying he should have. I'm not saying that he doesn't have people he's trying to do this for either. But there's just parts of the story that just don't add up. If you were that, yeah. if you felt that bad the way he was telling me, then you would do things to change it. But there's, there's yeah. just different layers in there. But back to your question is, I felt so betrayed and that hurt. And I didn't plan for that feeling. I didn't even mm -hmm. think of that. I, not only by him, by my friends, but just the whole grade 12 class in general, I had thought about how much time I put into this, I put into the school, I put into yeah. this, I was part of leadership, I always, I always like um, helped others with their homework and, you know, we got a new math teacher, nobody understood, so I made notes for a couple of people to help them understand and I never did that for valedictorian, like I never did anything, like I was just being me, but I was just like, when it comes down to it, I gave so much of myself to 
so many people. And even the people that I was friends with that, you know, our relationship didn't end up working out. I had still been nice to them. I never for one second was like saying bad things about somebody behind their back. I was just like, I didn't get it because I had just felt like I had done everything right. And I felt like I felt betrayed. I felt defeated. And there was part of me that was like, I don't trust anyone anymore. How can I trust anyone anymore when this happened? And, and then when I really sat with it, it was like, well, the hurt part of me and the protector part of me said that, you know, they were like, you can't trust anymore. But from that day, have I gone on to not trusting people? No, I still trust people. But there's just this, this new layer that presented and it sucks because yeah. I want to trust people, but when something mm -hmm. like that happens, it's really hard for me to just turn a blind eye to what that is because this happened. And I, I just think like now, like, I just think like, oh my God, what a journey. And I do see things a little bit different being like a year and a little bit ago, but it was just like, it was crazy. And something that I didn't, so I didn't have to go to school on Friday if I didn't want to. I really didn't need to. Um, and this was the last day of my high school career, but I didn't know it at the time. You didn't know it, right? No, I didn't know. So I was like, what if I just stayed in bed and all of them just felt so bad about me? And then I remembered and I pulled this, <laughs> I pulled this video from Miss Rachel Hollis, the one and only. <laughs> I yes, pulled, Rachel! This video showed up on my Instagram on the very, like the beginning of that year, of beginning of 2020. And it was just like, when, when you get knocked down and you have fallen hard, you got to get back up and keep going. And she, of course, said it way better than that. She's like, She's like, I want you to fail and I want you to fall and I want you to fall hard. But then I want you to get back up and keep going because you're going to have to keep doing that your whole life. And that just played in my head. And I was like, I have to go to school because I just, and I'm not lying when it took every single thing of me to get out of that bed and walk through those halls. It did not feel the same anymore because of those feelings of betrayed like I just I felt so hurt so walking down those hallways did not feel the same and then the guy who got it was avoiding me and I was like wow like I just was like nope it was like almost like <laughs> be careful because you know people were like be careful you know I feel like they were kind of like walking on eggshells around me a little bit but I was just going I was like okay I'm gonna write my exam and I'm gonna leave and I'm going to peace out. And, and I had a letter for one of my friends because I felt like I couldn't effectively talk to him, the ones that I hadn't been talking to. And I needed to get everything I needed out on a letter. And so I gave that to him right before I was going to leave. Yeah. And then as I give it to him, he was like, actually, we need to talk. And we went into, and he's like, come here really quick. And so I was like, okay but i'm holding it together by a thread and yeah it's gonna okay so we're in the stairwell and he's, he's talking to me about how he's so sorry for the way that he treated me and all these things and um he knows like he's like i'm sorry this must be so hard for you right now and i couldn't say anything i was i literally just started bawling and i i went down to the floor into an egg because I didn't want him to see me like that. I really didn't, but I couldn't, again, I was holding it together by thread, so I couldn't keep it all in. It was coming out no matter what, but I really didn't want him to see it. And I just remember being, he's like, get up please. And I'm like, I, I can't. And I was like, but thank you for saying what you said. And then he left, I left, and I went straight to my car. And I just start, you know, just crying like crazy. I'm like this. Ah, I was upset. I was mad. And it, the feeling was just so raw. And then for the new friend thing, like everything that had been going on in my, you know, school year had just all exploded within 20, within that 24 hours. 
it was a lot to deal with. And then, but there was something inside of me that was like, I can't leave the school. And I called my aunt for a little bit of, you know, moral support because she had been through a situation where, you know, she wanted something so bad. Everybody knew she deserved it, but she didn't end up getting it. So I called her because my mom was like trying to lift me up, but she's like, I don't like, you know, like she's like, call your aunt, just see what she has to say, like another perspective, right? So I, mm -hmm. I clean myself up. I'm like, okay, I'm going in again. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm crazy, but I'm going back in. I've already signed out, but I'm signing back in, I guess. So I go back in. And obviously you can tell my eyes, they've been crying, but I didn't believe that anyone could see that. So I go back in, I go to my next class and that same friend who had talked to me was like in the stairwell was like, we need to talk. And I'm like, uh, he's like, can we meet after school? And I was like, no, I, I can't meet after school. I actually had planned. So I was like, okay, let's just get it over with. And again, he, he pulled out this letter I gave him. He was like, yeah, and he, he underlines it and he starts talking about all of the things that I talked about and again, very apologetic. And then he brings in my other friend that I hadn't been talking to, but I had talked to him that week about what was going on because I felt like I could talk to him and brings it in so it's like this whole party and I'm just like, oh God. And again, I, I, just, I just cried. And I, and I listened, but I cried, but I listened to what they had to say. And I couldn't give much back. I couldn't say, and they were like, we can see this is really bothering you. Just like them talking or like, this is really hard for you. And I'm like, mm, you, there's a lot of things going on right now. Like I, if you can't tell, so, but I just, I just sat there and listened. And I'm so happy I did that because that was the last day because then that Sunday, COVID happened, and we never saw each other again, except over Zoom. And so for me, COVID was like this beautiful savior that was like, ah, <laughs> that came at the most perfect time for me. And I am going to acknowledge, yes, COVID has been very hard for people. I, I get that. And there's been a lot of, but it took you that. out of this toxic, shitty environment, which is so cool. And I know yeah. this is true for a lot of people. A lot of people have jobs where they got to go to work with shitty people every day and they don't have to do that anymore. And they, yeah. they're better now, you know? Yeah. yeah. COVID sucks, but that traditional being stuck in a building with a bunch of people you don't want to be working around is, I mean, thank God COVID has reset that in our, in our universe, yeah. because now yeah, it's absolutely. like, well, you can still get your work done and do your thing from home yeah. and not be around shitty people. And for those yeah. that really miss their awesome coworkers and schoolmates and want to go back into that environment, I'm sorry, but yeah. for those that are like you, then that's so great. Yeah. And it was, it was like the, the best the only thing I, I mean as soon as the news said there's no school i'm not gonna lie i started dancing i was like Woo! i was like no exams because we had exams the next week and i was not prepared for those so i was like no exams extra spring break didn't even think another thing about it and i was still happy to keep keep being in lockdown because i was so freed I felt free because I didn't have to go in and which was a good and a bad thing and and deal I guess deal with this head on yeah I still dealt with it yeah. and and that brings me to one of my points that I want to talk about today is the feeling the feelings I always what I always want to do is I always just want to push those feelings down and learn from them. I want to skip. There's like a whole process, right? You got to like, whatever you got to do, let the tears out, punch some things, feel the angry, sad, frustrated. And then there's like different processes, right? And which isn't like by book or anything. That's how I view it. And then there's the, okay, now what did I learn from this? And what I was trying to do with valedictorian was I was trying to skip over all the crappy feelings, bah, and then just learn something from it. But what kept happening was there would be little triggers and it would keep coming back up and I would just get, I would feel it all again. I would have dreams with those specific people in it. 
and it would bring it all back up and I'd be like, whoa, push it back down until I was really like, okay, this is consuming me when I'm awake, when I'm sleeping, I'm not even thinking about it, but you know, it's going because there's so many things that, yeah, there's just so much that was, that was going on inside my head. And so I was like, that's when I got help with a counselor again, because I had no longer had it. And I started talking to more people about it and opening up about it because I never wanted to share this story because I didn't want to A, seem like I was bragging or anything, but then B, also just because I don't, I didn't want to bring attention to myself through that way. And it's not that I'm ashamed of what happened. That's not where it's coming from. But it was more of just a, it was just like this weird thing. And it, and to say right now that I'm completely over this and everything's sunshine and rainbows is, is not true. Like I am still, I'm still working with it, but it's a different way because I've been challenged by others to look at it from his positions, you know, take myself outside of the situation and look at it from a different angles and see and that's been you know that's been very helpful it's hard because i don't want to see it from jack or sorry from that guy's point of view i don't want to see it yeah. from his point of view at all because yeah. i'm like i'm right right but i have i've been like okay what you know what was his family saying to him what did it feel like when he got that because he had said to me that he's always been trying to beat me and he didn't know how I did it all the time with everything I did. He said, I don't know how you did it, how you do it. And so I was like, he probably felt pretty good about himself because he had finally beat me. And so yeah, it was, just, it was just this, it was, there's so much that I've learned from it. There's still more that I'm learning from it every day. And there's just that, like that piece that people were seeing this outside version of me, you know, what they saw on the outside, very confident, like ready to go, hardworking, committed. But a lot of them didn't think I was like a normal human because they didn't see the inside of what I was hiding, the perfectionism, the anxiety, the pressures, the expectations, the, you know, self-doubt, all of these things, because I was just outwardly confident and they never saw anything inside. And, and it just, it was like, yeah, it was just, there's so many just interesting lessons that I've learned from this, but I feel like I'm still, you know, healing, growing through it and just trying to not let it like define me as much as it did at the beginning. So, yeah, that's, uh, so I just want to do a quick recap because I feel like you've yeah. touched on some really big things that everyone needs to really look at in their life. What are those achievements you're chasing? What is that accomplishment you think you need to have to be happier? And have you yeah. really sat in a visualization, in a meditation of pretending you've achieved that thing and really um, felt the feels of that achievement to yeah. confirm that you should be chasing it? That's one thing that I think we all need to do more often. Yeah. And if it really is something you need to achieve, for yourself or for others or a blend of both or to prove people wrong or whatever it is, if that's really something you need to do, um, making sure that you are uh, having boundaries in your life around the people you spend your time with, the actions you're taking, the things you're saying yes to, because if they're not in line with that achievement that you really, really want, then you're going to get burnt out and you're probably going to shoot yourself in the foot because we humanly as humans we only have so much energy and so many hours in the day and so many places we can spread our our awesomeness so i think um you've touched on those things big time which is awesome not just touched on but you've shared some pretty powerful stories around that and then again who are you hanging around with who are those people that you're choosing to be friends with are they getting a better deal than you are it's okay to tell them to beat it if not forever but for a, a while yeah and in a nice way and explaining to them why and explaining to them how you feel and yeah. the next thing that you've talked about that's super huge is getting counseling getting professional help when your head doesn't feel right when you feel like something's off right so yeah. being open to tr to counseling is huge I, I think it's so great that you shared that um yeah and i think <clears throat> There was something else that I wanted to get you to talk a little bit more about. Maybe you'll come back to me. Is there something that you wanted to share right now? Um, 
there was, uh, let's see. Um, oh, yes, there is. Okay, yes, I remember now. Okay, so, actually, so, um, a while ago, I saw this quote, um, I don't know where I saw it. It was on the internet, I believe. And I was just like, oh my goodness, this is so true. So <laughs> I printed it out, it's right here. But it, the quote is, you either get the result you want or the lesson you need. Ooh. And that was just like, oh, okay. Because I was like, the result I wanted was to get valedictorian. But there was obviously lessons that I needed to get and that was kind of all part of all part of the experience and everything. Yeah. But I think that like I think that quote is so powerful. <clears throat> because I think that you can do everything right and the outcome will still go wrong. But you yeah. can also do everything wrong and the outcome will still go right. And so I think it really does come down to, you know, you're gonna get the result you want or the lesson that you need. And I think yes. that there was just like that's a really big, that's a really big quote around all of this, I believe. And yes. the other thing I wanted to talk about was that there was people that I did not expect to come and reach out to me when this all happened. You know, two of my really great best friends from junior high and a little bit of senior high that I was no longer friends with, they reached out to me. One of them actually saw my car in the parking lot and came over to me and said, like, are you okay? And like, and then the one, she messaged me and I was just like, it's just kind of interesting to see like who all responded in certain ways. And, and there was definitely people that I was like, wow, I was shocked that you reached out to me. But I think that was just like another, another thing that kind of happened. But yeah, did you, do you remember your other question? Yeah, yeah. I do. Sorry, I'm writing because I just yeah. want to miss this one. Because you, you didn't talk a lot about this yet. This is a, a, the next part of your story that I think is really huge and needs to be shared. Because when you were going through a lot of this, I, 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 was, I was not aware of, of a lot of it. I was aware of a little bit of the stuff you were going through, but not a lot well, of I it. I didn't share a lot. I just gave. Yeah, it took yeah. you time to process and to feel probably even just comfortable sharing it with me. But one of the things that I know we had talked about a lot in your grade 12 year was your business, was your jewelry business was, um, and, and I didn't understand you at that point. I didn't understand you enough to really, uh, to say much to you other than you need to unfollow what's her face <laughs> from the jewelry business Yeah, because you, I, I, I realized later on in your grade 12 year, how competitive you are and how achievement oriented you are and how driven you are and how successful you want to be, which is yeah. awesome. But I also can relate and I've definitely burnt myself out at times and I've definitely taken on too much at times and I've definitely um, compared myself to others and felt the shittiness that comes from that. So my only thing to you when you started opening up to me more about your business goals was like, yo, you need to stop following what's her face that is got this big jewelry business and is so fantastic and perfect because you were yeah. comparing yourself to her. But this kind of comes back to the, this comes back to, you know, the title of this is missing the target. So what is the target? And did you decide the target or did someone else decide the target, right? Did you decide the parameters of valedictorian and that the target looks like this and I want that? Or did someone else say you need to achieve X number of dollars of sales per month and you need to look like this in your Instagram pictures and you need to have this type of a dog and like, you know what I mean? Like who's setting those targets? And I think yeah. the cool thing about what you're, and I, and this is my segue into what you've been doing recently with your business, your own business, not the jewelry business is I, and I've said this to you a number of times is I don't like, I don't like cookie cutter, multi-level marketing businesses. And I, and I know that your jewelry business is super cool. I do. I think it's great. But what I don't like about any of the direct selling business is, is they decide the parameters. They decide the levels of your success. They, they set these measurements and targets for you. And what I think is so cool about being an entrepreneur and someone who like me and a lot of the women watching and listening to this, they create their businesses based on their definitions of success and their definitions of success 
as all of you who've experienced marketing school, has to be connected to other people's success, it has to be connected to you helping others achieve what they need to achieve. That is your business. That is your target. It can't be about the number, the dollar amount of income that you want to bring every month. Yes, we have to look at the numbers, absolutely. But we can't just look at the numbers and expect everyone to fall in line for our goals. So yeah. what you've started doing in recent months is teaching people about Instagram. You're now producing podcasts. You've got these skill sets and these talents that you've decided this is my business and you've created proposals and, and you know, entrepreneurs have said, yes, Selena, we like what you're proposing. We're going to hire you to do this work. Like, yeah. I just think it's such an important message that we, and, and I think a lot of people who come from the corporate world, I know, you know, if Noreen's watching this, she's going to totally agree. It's like, you end up falling into line with what you're told to do and what you're told success looks like and what you're told the target is. And when you get fired or you decide to start your own business, however that happens, you have to rewire your brain a little bit to be yeah. like, I decide the target. I decide yeah. the, the milestones. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about that for a Absolutely. minute? Absolutely. I really do. But my phone's going to die. And I oh! don't know why I use so much battery. So can you just talk for like a five seconds so I can grab a charger? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, you go grab a charger. So yeah, so when Selena was talking to me, you know, last year at the end of her um, grade 12 year, about she was starting to open up a little bit about feeling inadequate and feeling like she wasn't, you know, where she wanted to be. Um, it was actually last summer, it was actually after grade 12. And I remember feeling like this, if you've ever felt like this, um, coming out of high school, coming out of uh, maybe post-secondary education, coming out of some sort of a course, thinking that you would have felt differently then, thinking that you would have had your shit together more, thinking you would have the next steps all laid out for yourself and not, and then just feeling like you've done something wrong or you're, I hate to use the F word, but the failure word sometimes pops into our heads, right? We think that we failed. Um, that was the kind of place that I think Selena was kind of in. And I want her to talk more about that because it was, but the problem with, you know, those feelings of failure are they often are coming from other people's, other people's definitions of success, not ours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I agree. I was listening to all that. I think that's awesome. Um, so where I was going to jump in is I think like a really big lesson that I learned was more about, you know, like, I wasn't, when you were talking, the first thing that popped out to me is that I wasn't taking care of myself because I had chosen that I was going to be this machine of a human and only get 100%. And I had this crazy mindset and I had this drive. So the mixture of all these things were kind of wild. Um, but I choose now to take care of myself and I choose to make time for that whereas before you know I was just I was shooting my arrow ahead all of the the accomplishments that I was trying to get so if we think of like a target like a real like arrow target thing right um and you know the middle is all those accomplishment accomplishments whether they're put on by ourselves or others and for me, straight on it, like quite honestly, valedictorian, I chose, but things shifted. So, you know, like I was telling you the story where people were now starting to bug me about it. And it was, it was, I had changed, but they hadn't seen the change, you know, or they had, they don't understand the change. So it just kept nagging and nagging and testing me and <laughs> kept making me fall back in the trap and try to balance mm. that. But I think that, you know, sometimes when we, do the bone arrow we sling our we got our bone arrow in we sling it back and we we let go of it and it and it doesn't hit the center we're just kind of like well well now what like it sucks like that sucks we didn't get it and we don't um appreciate that oh we got really close you know we mm -hmm. almost made it to the circle you know at least we hit the actual target you know in right. some sense we didn't yeah. hit the tree or whatever, you know? Right. And I think it's yeah. just taking taking those different levels of appreciation of the system, really. And to go on to, like, what you said, yes, there's things that, you know, I didn't choose. You know, um, when I wanted my, you know, I wanted things to change in the way that I did things, 
it was hard for others around me. And I think this happens a lot in others' lives as well, is it's hard mm -hmm. because when you're changing and the others around you aren't, it can be very hard for me. What I notice is that I'm a helper. I'm a giver. I'm definitely that. And what I would want to do is I learn something new and I change something. I want to help someone else do the same thing. So I'd be like, come on, let's go. Let me help you. And then I would lose my progression because I was trying to help other people. So I, does that kind of answer what you were saying? Or I, I think I... Yeah, no, I just wanted you to just, just talk a little bit more about how it felt to kind of be in that mode of... Uh... Yeah, of of realizing that you're chasing something that you uh, that you may or may not get, and then of course, like you said, missing the target. But back to your quote that you held up, you know, there's a lesson in every missing of the target, and missing the yeah. target, like you said, doesn't mean failure. No, it means there's a lesson there, and we yeah. often forget to look for the lesson, and we go straight to focusing on the fact that we've missed the target. Yeah. So I hope for everyone watching, listening to this, they are realizing more and more that anything that they're maybe currently perceiving as a failure is not a failure. It's an opportunity to learn. Yeah, um, I, I want you to talk a little, go ahead. I was just going to say like off of that, I think that like, um, I want to word this correctly. Um, I was going to say that, you know, we, um, oh my goodness. Why did I just lose it? It jumped out of my brain. Oh, you lost it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what did you say again? You said, I said that we need to focus on the fact that we missed the target a little bit. There's a lesson there oh, right. okay. instead of just thinking about like failure. Right. Okay. So I would argue that it is more valuable to miss the target because it's going to make you so much stronger and it's going to help you grow in so many ways. And, you know, it's really hard when we're, you know, we really want it because I know I really, really wanted it. And I didn't get it, but how much have I grown and how much have I learned and, you know, uh, and how much am I still going to learn? And I have to constantly tell, Lindsay calls it that little bitch on the shoulder. <laughs> I have to constantly tell her or light her on fire and tell her to move away. And I think that, <laughs> or just leave. Like, Blowtorch! <laughs> yeah, <ring. laughs> yeah, and I, I just think that, it has a lot to do with that we're kind of wired as humans to only look at the result and shoot for that. But then yeah. we forget to acknowledge that how much power there actually is in not hitting it 100% and learning and growing and developing and becoming stronger through that. So I wanted to add that onto what you were saying. Yes. And I think that's a big, like, my biggest beef with traditional school and like, you know, my son's obviously in grade nine and it's my biggest beef with it is it's not setting people up for the right mindset to succeed in real life, especially yeah. as entrepreneurs, because, you know, having, it's like this, this is the definition of success on this exam money. is getting this it's percentage. Money. Yeah. It's yeah and it's money. like, and you show up at this time and you learn these fundamental skills and like, that's not real life people. Right. But yeah. I get it. Like, you know, it's, um, yeah, I get it. But bleh. anyways, the school I, I go back. System, and forth. The school thing. system. Oh my gosh. Don't even get me started because yeah, we oh, definitely won't go there today, yeah, no, but like I as a mom, I really want to go yeah. there in another conversation because yeah. I do think as moms, we've got to be really careful. A, about how we're helping them define their definitions of success and those targets. Yeah. And B, I think we need to be very careful that we don't help them avoid failure because I see a lot of parents doing this. They're coddling their children and their kids are just not able to cope with the kind of shit like what you described yeah. in this video today. They're not able to cope with that. Yeah. And somehow you've been able to rally and, and, you know, and just hold it together yeah. And then be honest about it and talk about it. Because I know for me, like I went through some hard stuff with a business coach and it took me a long time to be able to talk about that. And if you at your age being able to come on this interview today, knowing that I'm going to dig really deep into all that stuff and you willingly are here sharing this story to help other people. Yeah. Um, it's just such a testament to the way you were raised. And so I think um, it's really cool. And yeah, so back to just like not protecting our, our kids and, um, yeah. from, you know, and you're, you're, you're a 19 year old girl, you're still kind of a kid in a lot of ways. Like, yeah. you know, you know, that it's important to be able to look for the lessons in those failures, in those missing of the targets, which we like yeah. to call them missing the target, not failures. 
um, you know the value in that and looking for the lessons in that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I have one more thing I want to talk yeah. about because Go I think ahead. this is a really big part of what you've already shared is taking a break. You said COVID was a blessing for you. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to um, an entrepreneur yesterday who said the same thing. He, re he realized that one of the things he wishes he'd been doing for years as a business owner, 17 years had a business is taking breaks. And I, you know, me lately, I've been getting very rigid with that too, where I was taking a specific amount of time, one week, two weeks off work. Like, you know, and I, and I don't go dark on social media. I don't go off the grid completely, but the value in just not having those meetings all the time. And those, those things in the calendar, basically just clearing your calendar, making time to reflect on what's working, what's not, where, where do I feel I want to do more of that? Where do I feel like that's not where I want to do more? Like, and for you, you had your, you know, your calendar cleared because of COVID and it, you, you really thrived in not having to go from thing to thing to thing. Cause I remember watching you too, thinking like, good God, woman, like you're in singing and you're in hockey and you're in sports and you're in doing all these things. And I'm just like, when do you sleep? Like, you know, and all of a sudden you were so, you felt so blessed to have yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. And I'd love to talk about this. So um, I had my first experience of burnout when I was in grade 10. And I was actually, it's crazy. I was like, flying to Vancouver to a hockey tournament right from a singing competition. But I also had ex exams that week. And so I was like, <laughs> it was like, and it was provincials for hockey. It was like high intensity. I was doing like, so many things all at once and so I experienced a f my first kind of um, burnout there I got really really sick my body physically started breaking down I was always like I had a stomach flu and then I started having like more of like congestion and everything and I remember being in the hotel like just absolutely wanting to just die because I felt like I felt so sick like my body just felt like it was giving up and I pushed, I didn't listen. I didn't listen to that burnout. I was like, oh, I'm just sick. It's fine. So I just kept going. And then in grade 11, I got, um, I started not having energy like I used to have. So I would come home and I would want to go to bed. So first I thought, oh, maybe I got mono. Don't know how I get it, but <laughs> maybe I got mono. Um, and, you know, through the, the water fountain or something. And because I was like a zombie. <laughs> I yeah, was like a zombie. Yeah. And, and again, I was like, this isn't to do with overload and overworking and everything. And um, I was like, we just couldn't figure it out. Went to the doctor, got tested, nothing was working. So then they're like, okay, let's just take a whole bunch of samples of your blood and test everything to see what's really going on with you. And again, to get me to a doctor, it took a counselor to say, I think you should go get checked out. Because for me, yeah. you know, I, I was raised, it's like, oh, little scratch, keep going, it's fine, you know, like keep pushing yeah. through. And there's times when, that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. But for mm -hmm. me, it was, it was not a good time to just push things away. So I went to the doctor, got all the testing done. And it turns out that my body wasn't producing enough iron and I had a whole bunch of other issues. So I was again, not performing at my highest ability because I wasn't taking care of myself and taking breaks. And I remember just being so helpless. I felt so helpless because I, I I was like, why is this happening to me? Like, I was like, why am I not feeling good anymore? Why can't I do as much as I did before? That's a big thing. I was like, I was be I've been able to do 15 million things at one time and I was fine. And so no. I was just like, what, like what's going on here? So um, I just remember, yeah, I felt just very alone. I felt anxious. I felt very depressed like, I don't know, depressed is a very strong word, but I just felt so, ugh, I didn't feel good. And I was like, okay, something has to change. And again, others, you know, speaking to others and everything, I was really like, what can I start to do? So I started experimenting with self-help. My counselors would help me with picking out things and trying new things. And I'm like, yes, 
let me try yoga let me try meditation let me try reading let me try I would like and I did that in school too like I was like let me try this way of note taking and this way and this way and this way and this way and let me see what works best like I'm like let's try so like I was I was there for that so I was trying a whole bunch of different things and slowly started feeling better but again that perfectionist inside of my brain was just like no you are not stopping there's this side of me and it's even still i'm still working with it right now where it's like there's part of me that does want to take a break and relax but then there's that part of me that's also like you need to achieve you need to get up and do these things and that that voice can be helpful at times but it can also be very consuming and so what I realized with COVID, that was the first time I actually took a break. And it's funny because I kept saying, I just want a break. If everything could just pause, I would be so happy. I kept saying that. So and you're the reason COVID happened. You wish for it. <laughs> I Damn it, Selena, I knew it. <laughs> I, <laughs> don't blame me, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah so it was just it but was I like, think a lot of people were there I've talked to so many people who were there they were like I just feel like I'm on a freaking hamster wheel yeah. and then COVID hit and there was a lot of people that were kind of like I kind of like this yeah. but like the <laughs> right on that hamster wheel sometimes I just didn't know how to get off of it because I yeah. try but then my body pulled me back and I keep going so like kind of like dip, dipping my feet foot in the water but COVID really allowed me like it was the first time I really like slept in and like was like sleep is a good thing and I don't have to wake up at eight o'clock or seven o'clock six o'clock every morning to go to a place that I hate I got to woke, wake up on my own time I got to yeah. apply myself to my classes when I wanted to and for me it wasn't a it wasn't an issue to get schoolwork done right it was just kind yeah. of like when it was everything would always get done. It's just when I decided, which was different because I was always like always showing up and always doing it. And so I really realized the importance of it. And the biggest thing that's helped me is if I don't put it in my calendar, it's not happening. So any, if I could give you guys some advice, put it in your calendar, like seriously, like sections to, <laughs> and I know you're excited about this because I used to be all like digital. I would write everything in or not digital, all hand. I write everything in and I was very like paper and Lindsay's like switch to digital. It was the best thing ever. Google and Calendar. Yes. Google Calendar. It's the best. But like I actually like. I have to put those things in or else I'll just quickly grab something from the fridge that's not going to help me and then just move yeah. on. like I have to physically put those things and that's what works for me it might be different for others but it's something that I have learned that has really really helped me to actually like force myself to take those breaks because I also have a really hard time with disconnecting fully I'm always like I'm kind of there I'm kind of there I can't remember the last time I fully you know, broke off from everything and just like not forgot, like just, just left everything. But I think it's, it's so important to do that. And I think like there was a, um, there was a part of people um, with COVID that were like complaining about everything and at the very beginning and it was all very new and, and everything. And I just remember that like I was so thankful and I was so grateful and something beautiful came out of that time for me right at the beginning I created force for good Fridays and I was like seeing the pain in the world and I was trying to help it so force for good Fridays is where I go out every Friday and I just spread some kindness spread some love and just and you've continued doing that for over a year yeah. every Friday it's been so cool to see yeah. you do that it's been do, such a blessing I do like either motivation on the page like I have an Instagram page for it so I'll either do motivation um or like inspiring quotes because I feel like that's also an act of uplifting people and um and then I do like little baskets and a whole bunch of little things and it's just it's been a really great way and that came from the rest period where I yeah. did nothing and I had no pressure on myself to do anything. 
And yeah. And it's like, what do I want to fill my time with now that the ca- calendar is clear yeah. and your heart built that, yeah. that thing in the calendar. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I think that, uh, you know, I should be listening to myself right now because right now I'm putting so much pressure on myself because of the business that I'm creating. I want it to be a certain way. I wanted to make, I wanted to make a whole all, like I wanted to make sense before I put it out. But like, sometimes like Lindsay says, you just gotta, you just gotta throw it out there and then it'll shape into what, what it needs to be. But I yeah. think that it's just like when, when there's a lot of that pressure I found like right now and a few week, months ago, I was putting so much pressure on myself to develop things in my business while also being at school that it was mm-hmm. just like, oh, maybe I need a break and maybe I should stop thinking about it so much, which is hard for me. Because yeah. again, that voice in there is like, when are you gonna get this done? Da, 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 da. <laughs> but I think yeah. like, yes, around the whole point of the story is that taking breaks and taking time for yourself is so important. And it's something that it kind of has to be a non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Yeah. Is that how you say yeah. it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I think it has to be that because I truly believe that if I'm not like, healthy and in the mind and in body, I can't show up as well for others. And so that's really where I have been. And I know it's kind of like, oh, I should be doing it for myself. But I know that that's something that motivates me. Yeah, I'm the same way, though. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I definitely do a lot for myself to benefit others. Because I know that if I'm not okay, and if I'm not feeling fit and strong and healthy, I'm not going to do a great job for other people. So it's really, you know, and, and I think that just comes with maturity. And that's the thing about you. I always call you a weirdo, but like, you're so unique in that it took me to my like late 20s, it took, you know, becoming a mom to figure mm-hmm. out that I cared more about serving others than I cared about serving myself. And that I, you know, was always faking those, those meaningful conversations. Like I read how to win friends and influence people when I was 17, but I didn't, I learned how to have those meaningful conversations. I learned how to seem genuinely interested in others and ask the right questions, but I wasn't really there. Right. I was definitely good at faking it. But once (laughs) I started really caring about other people, everything became easier because when you're not doing things for yourself and you know, when you're in a shitty time, like and this is the thing that I think is so cool about you because you, you did this too. When you're in a shitty time and you feel like your friends all suck and they're not the awesome people you thought that they were and you missed a target, you get dumped, whatever it is. If you immediately focus on other people and you've got to take care of yourself to do that. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself, but you focus on other people and you created force for good Fridays. And I created a marketing school for a free market you know we did things in times when we were feeling kind of shitty to like you know yeah yeah I yeah. and it works it works yeah. and yeah. yeah yeah I do I think that's I think it's so amazing and I think it's all just kind of like I think everybody like learns everything when they're supposed to and it's that trust piece that I know I know you know I'm struggling with because I'm like I just want to know what life is gonna look like and then I'll execute it for you (laughs) Um, but I think it's just like that trust is just like you know I do believe that everything does happen for a reason and even going back to this story I just told I believe that Mm. all of those struggles with my friends throughout whole of high school happened for a reason and I wouldn't change one thing about all of it because I learned so much about boundaries and being the person that I want to be in and I just even though I had to go the hard route sometimes Um, which we all have to do. I think that I would never change one thing that happened from my high school career just because I've learned and grown so much from it, even though, you know, there was the val like there was big things that were really hard for me that I really wanted. But I feel like even though I didn't get it, it was meant to be that way. I needed to, like I said, either get the result or the lesson. I needed to learn and grow a little bit more and challenge myself in certain ways. So I definitely agree with that. 
So bring everyone up to speed on Selena right now. You have obviously your jewelry business still, but you have your own business helping entrepreneurs. Um, you also have aspirations to start your own podcast because you, the common thread between your jewelry business and what you're doing now with your marketing business is you love helping people share their stories because the yeah. jewelry is yeah. like, it, it, yeah, it's, it's very personalized and it's got, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really cool jewelry and you gifted me some pieces and I just think it's so lovely, yeah. but what you're doing now to help other people share those stories, specifically entrepreneurs, bring us up to speed on that. Yeah. So I am with Origami Owl. That's my jewelry company. We have lockets that tell stories and we put charms inside. And so since I was 16, I have been helping people develop their stories and put things into charms. And I could talk to someone and within five minutes, I'm like, I have a locket built for you in my pocket. Like, like I, I just developed some of those skills. And so I still am selling that jewelry. I love it so much, but I'm starting to That's move awesome. into my own direction because, you know, it's just my own thing. And I'm really passionate about helping others tell stories effectively to either educate and motivate others. And so I'm doing that in a few different ways, like Lindsay said. So I am helping um, others pre uh, launch their podcasts. I know a lot of women that have so much content already to go, but also so much inside that they need to share. And sometimes they just need that technical help or that little push. Yeah. So I'm there to help them with the podcast production uh, which I love so much. It's so exciting. And then mm -hmm. I also help people on Instagram, train them on how to use Instagram because it's another great tool to get your message out there to share your story. And I genuinely believe that from a like marketing standpoint, I guess, is that the more you share your stories and the more that you share about your your life and what you've been through and how you've shifted or pivoted or all that kind of stuff. I truly feel like more people will be able to connect with you and relate and be like, you're not a robot. Mm -hmm. You're just, you're just like the rest of us. You're a human kind of thing. So I'm very passionate about training beginners and also level up, you know, how people level up their Instagram that they already have. And then my other service that I offer is um, social media management. So, you know, that's, again, just helping you get that content out there, actually staying consistent on social media yeah. and all those things. So that's what I'm really passionate about. And, of course, <laughs> Lindsay mentioned I want to start a podcast. I don't 100% know yet what that's going to look like, but I definitely want it to be a platform for others to share stories, to share their stories and teach others how to, you know, form their own story. And then also mm -hmm. like all those, but all those types of things. And so I'm excited mm -hmm. to start looking at that, working on that. And um, yeah, it's kind of, that's what's going on right now. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I noticed today in this interview with you, and this happened for me when I started, when I was writing my first book was I started getting my stories out there and I start putting, putting them into a book format. And, and once my, once my book actually came out, I knew people were reading it. It was, it was very interesting, just the experience because it, it, it forced me to really dive into some of the things that had happened to me and share them in a new way and um the wheel is spinning around your face maybe we're done here you might be gone um but yeah so i encourage everyone watching this to i think selena's phone died or something i encourage everyone watching this to accept those challenges to be interviewed on instagram live um i've got a number of women that have uh, responded to my call out for women who are looking to write books um I've been saying, you know, writing a book is the best way to really get to know yourself. Kind of like Selena did today. She really just put a book of information out there in obviously in video format, in audio format, if you're listening to this on the podcast, but I really encourage you to do that. Um, and the best stories to share are those ones where you miss the target and you learn the lesson because those are the lessons that can help other people feel more whole, feel more, um, feel more on the right path. And, and, you know, that inspiration and that uplifting effect is, it's, it's just, it's so powerful. More, your stories are more powerful, powerful than you will ever know. So, um, would love to interview you on the Fempreneur Marketing Podcast, which is done by, you know, what we've done here today on Instagram Live. And, um, so reach out to me if you have a story that you'd love to share with other Fempreneurs that you think would be valuable for them. I'm sure it will be super valuable for them. Thanks for tuning in everyone. And I really appreciate you spending a little bit of your Friday with us here in Femperland. 
um, you can reach Selena and you can get in touch with her if you're looking for someone to help you with your social media. If you're looking for someone to launch your podcast, just get in touch with her here on Instagram. Her link in her bio is where you can do that. And she will, uh, or you can just send her a DM too and she'll get back to you. She's got a full suite of services available. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, Selena, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate you being willing to share that story because I know that's a really heavy one for you. And I'm just so excited at all the awesome stuff that's about all the awesome, awesome stuff that's going to come from you sharing that story. All right. Bye for now, everyone. Hope to see you tomorrow um, at YYC Bike Night. Learn more about that at fempreneurland.com.